Welcome to the second Sunday in Advent, December 6th. How exciting. Today's going to be a special day when we have a wonderful pageant. It's a, it's a virtual pageant. It's not like the ones we usually do, of course, because of COVID. But it's going to be a fun time. Hope you uh, are excited. I know I am. Also want to have a couple of reminders for you. One is keep in mind that on December 16th at 6.30, we're planning to have a Blue Christmas virtual event. So mark your calendar. It would be a special time for us to, to remember and care for one another at that time. Another event that we want you to participate in, and some of you have probably started, <clears throat> are, is our Candlelight Christmas Challenge, which we're inviting people to imagine themselves being in the sanctuary in darkness and lighting the light of Christ and passing it. We're going to do it virtually this year. So we'd love to have as many participants as we can. If you need more details, you can find those in our weekly announcements or you can find some uh, more information on our Facebook page. Also want to remind you that going right along with this whole Advent season and this theme that we're doing through Advent, uh, thinking about angels amongst us and remembering uh, do not be afraid, there's a wonderful Advent devotional uh, study that goes that's in our Advent kits, if you haven't picked one up yet. We have candles in there, so you can, at home, you can be lighting and remembering each of the, each of the special Sundays of Advent. But the devotional kits run right along with our series, and I think you'll find them very helpful as a way of spending time together as a family. Let's go to worship together. This Advent season, we're looking a little more closely at the winged messengers who came to Zechariah, Mary, Joseph, and the shepherds. Their incredible messages carried God's good news, and we are called to do the same. Last week, Zechariah freaked out when the angel appeared to him at the temple. Mary's reaction today is quite different. She's a little perplexed about why there's an angel in her house. And when the messenger tells her nothing is impossible with God, she agrees and even seems to be at peace.
But don't just look up for the way God works is to plant more hope right here on earth, just like it was at Jesus' If you have an Advent candle wreath at home, I invite you to light yours with me now. Holy living God, blessed Jesus, guiding spirit, as we light this candle of peace today, a light within us, your flame of peace. Grant us openness to hear your message. Grant us courage to be your messengers in the world, creating more peace in the midst of fear.
and they all lived happily ever after. The end. That was a good book. Good night, you guys. Sweet Mommy. dreams. Hey, Mommy, don't go yet. Why? What's going on? You need to get some sleep. That book had some scary parts, and now I'm thinking about all the things that I'm scared of. Like what? Well, let's see. There's airplanes, bees, coronavirus, fires, ghosts, questions, spiders, uh, worms, x-rays, and zoom. Did you just list all the things you're afraid of in alphabetical order? Wow. Wow. Sometimes I get scared, too. So how do I feel better right now? Well, stories can help. When I'm afraid or I'm worrying, I remember that I'm part of a story that is way bigger than myself. God's story is full of people who are sometimes afraid. You know, I think I have time to tell you one more story tonight. This is part of God's story. During a time when many people were afraid of many things, just like us. It all begins in Nazareth, a town in Galilee, with a young woman named Mary. Welcome everybody to Mary's Marvelous Makes. Today, we are going to make some bread. For this make, we are going to need flour, sugar, a measuring cup, and a bowl, a spoon, So sorry, pardon me. I guess I miscalculated the landing again. Let's start over. Greetings, favored one. God is with you. What kind of greeting is that? Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. You will have a baby boy and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and he will be called the Son of the Most High, and his kingdom will have no end. How can this be? How is this going to happen? The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the baby to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. Nothing is impossible with God. Was all of that a question? Um, huh? Huh? I mean, were you asking me if I wanted to do this? Good question. Yes! Yeah! Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me, according to this message. Oh my! Oh my! What am I going to tell Joseph? Uh-huh. Well, okay. Bye. Mary is pregnant. Oh. How is that possible? We aren't even married yet. And the law says, that is not good. No, not good at all. Oh, oh, I've got to go work out or something. Oh, oh, oh. She says that this child one the child she carries two who is actually God's child three my only option is to marry her and then divorce her quietly. That will save my reputation at least. But she will be disgraced. I don't know what to do and I'm afraid. Oh, oh Mary. Joseph's 
Son of David, do not be afraid to get married. God's Holy Spirit has made Mary pregnant. I don't get it. She will have a son, and you will name him Jesus. God saves because he will save his people from their sins. going to marry Mary. What? What? I'm going to marry Mary. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. And we're going to have a baby and we're going to name him Jesus. And I'm going to be a dad. Oh, yeah. ah. oh boy. I need to pack. Yeah. Hold on, I have questions. Why is Joseph packing a bag? Why is Joseph afraid about Mary having a baby? Do angels still come to you in dreams? And why is everyone making such a big deal about this? It's just a baby. I don't have the answer to most of those questions. This is one of those miraculous, larger than life kind of stories with a lot of unexplainable parts. You sound like Pastor Howard when I ask him tough questions. Good. I'm glad I sound like Pastor Howard. Because <laughs> there's a lot that we just don't know, right? I do have the answer to one of those questions, though. Why is Joseph packing a bag? To answer that, we have to meet the emperor. Make way for the emperor's royal highness. Coming through. Don't make me take out this sword, people. Here he comes. He of great wisdom, wealth, and strong guards. I heard that. Nice. Citizens of Rome, it is I, your Lord, Savior, Good Shepherd, Light, Way, Prince of Peace, Caesar Augustus. First, I want to say you're welcome for all the great things I've done for you. There has never been an emperor as powerful and glorious as me. My empire is vast. Your people are obedient. I am saving you all, all of you. You owe me so much, so much. Citizens, I want to count you. Yes, let's get a good head count so you can all pay me for what I am owed. Go to your hometown and register so that you can show proper appreciation of my awesomeness. I decree to be so. Farewell, my fifth of children. May you all know my magnificent ways. Farewell. All right, move it, people. You would, Mr. Perfect. Wonderful new taxes in nine months. You can thank Ebenezer Caesar then. Make way, party's over. Go home and start saving your money so you can give it to the wealthiest man alive. Hail Caesar. Okay. The good news is, I think I found us a place to stay. Finally, this baby is not going to wait much longer. Where are we staying? Did you get us a place at that nice inn I like? You know, the one with the good breakfast? Um, not exactly. It was full. Oh no! What are we going to do? Sleep outside with shepherds? Stay in a stable with donkeys? What? No. Who would do that? Joseph, this baby is coming soon. I know, I know. The guest rooms are all full. But I found a nice innkeeper who will let us stay in a small space in his home. Oh, good. Yeah. It's a nice space. Lots of hay. Maybe a few animals. All right. Let's do this. Okay, stop there. What? Why? I don't think I want to hear about the birth part. Okay. <laughs> we'll have that conversation another time. Um, 
you know, the Bible doesn't even say that much about the birth anyway. It just says that Mary had the baby and wrapped it in strips of cloth and laid it in a feeding trough. That's it. But those details are important to remember for the next part of our story. It takes place in a field. Okay, then you can keep going. There were shepherds living outside in the fields nearby, watching over their sheep. They were about to be frightened by powerful messengers from God, but they would soon find out that they did not need to be afraid. Glory to God in the highest! Ahem! Ahem! <clears throat> Glory to God! 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 Glory to God. Glory to God. Is this thing even working? Am I on mute? Are you people even listening? Do not be afraid. I bring good news to you that will bring great joy to all the people. Today, in the town of David, a savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. And this will be a sign to you. You will find the baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Good news for all the people. The Messiah is born, a Savior. Glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace among those whom God favors. That is all. happened. <laughs> well, we're going, right? Yes, we are going. We have to go. Do we bring the sheep? I think we have to. <laughs> we want to come to take us with you. What were those signs again? A baby wrapped in strips of cloth. Lying in a manger. Da. We won't forget. Let's go. You too, sheep. Come on. Ba! 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 That was a miracle. It was exactly how the angel had described. The baby was wrapped in cloth and lying in a manger. Friends. We have seen something amazing tonight. I don't know about you, but it feels like the world has changed. Yeah, but why do you think we got to see it? Nobody cares about us shepherds. We're poor and we don't have very much power. I have no idea, but the baby's mother, Mary, acted like this was exactly what was supposed to happen. Like it was meant for people like us. Maybe this baby will lift up the lowly and bring down the lofty, wouldn't that be something? It sure would. I believe there's no limit to what this baby can do. Hey, shepherds, was that star there last night? I don't remember seeing that one before. Hello, and welcome to our observatory. We are the wise men. The wise people. 
The Magi. But we are really more like scientists. Astronomers. We study the stars. We study the stars so well, when something changes, we know immediately. And we just noticed a new star! And now we must use our scientific instincts to figure out why there's a new star in the sky. We now begin our journey. Just ask that. Now? Yes, yes, it looks like we are here. Oh, we gotta be close. That's the capital of Jerusalem. Now let's find that King Herod so we can get some information. Did someone say king? That would be me. I'm the big cheese around here. Everyone's talking about it. They say that I am the most powerful king they've ever seen. The best king that Jerusalem has ever had. We got it. Best king ever. So, we are here because we're here to see the newly born king. The child born king of the Jews. We observed his star and its rising. And we have come to honor him. Uh, would you excuse me uh, for a moment? I uh, need to make a quick call. Thank you. Hey, uh, put me through to my smart people, please. Thank you. Yes, hi, this is your king. Huh? Yes, yes, the very best king, I know, thank you, yes. Um, hey, I need to know... Where is the Messiah going to be born? Uh-huh. You're sure? Bethlehem. Positive? Okay. All right, thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, bye-bye. Okay, um, wise people, thank you for coming. Thank you for sharing. Um, I want you, I've got great news. Great news. I want you to go to Bethlehem and um, find this child. Give him the honor, all the things that you want to do. Give that to him. And then I want you to come right back to me so that I, too, may honor this child. Okay? Thank you. All right. Now, be on your way. Thank you. Uh, sure. Okay. We can do that. Let's get out of here. After we left, King Herod decided to sit around and be jealous and plan his revenge. He felt very threatened there was a new leader. But we found Jesus and brought him special gifts. Gifts like gold. Frankincense. And myrrh. And although these gifts are usually for royalty. Powerful people. Grown men. We brought these gifts to a small, weak, oppressed child. Even though we didn't know exactly what was going on, we knew he was important. This good news will turn everything upside down. Oh, and by the way, we didn't return to that wicked King Herod. Nope, no way. We were warned in a dream to take a different way home. You might even say it was a scenic route. <laughs> and now we return to watching the stars. Those wise people were really brave. They honored the king God had chosen, brought him presents, disobeyed the orders of King Herod, and made it home safely. Yes, they were brave and determined. Everyone in the story was, I think, from Mary and Joseph to the shepherds and the magi. They all recognized that the birth of Jesus was going to change the world. Are you feeling safe and sleepy yet? Our story is coming to an end. 
Yes, I feel safe and sleepy. But this isn't really the end. No? Why not? It's bedtime. We need to get some sleep. Mommy, this is just the beginning. Jesus is born. He grows up. He changes water into wine. He teaches. He heals. And he flips tables. <laughs> yes, yes, you're right. Jesus' birth is just the beginning. We have a lot to talk about. But it's late. For tonight, let's focus on this one special moment. This one night that brought us Jesus. Okay, that makes sense. This is a really good story. God's story is unfolding more and more every day. And in the end, all things will be made right. That doesn't mean we won't be afraid along the way, but we can trust that love and justice will have the final word. Speaking of the final word, let's get one final word from Mary, the mother of Jesus. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For you, God, have looked with favor on the lowliness of your servant. Surely from now on, all generations will call me blessed. For you, the mighty one, have done great things for me, and holy is your name. Your mercy is for those who fear God from generation to generation. You, O oh God, have shown strength with your arms. You have scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. You, God, have brought down the powerful from, powerful from their thrones. And lifted up the lowly. You have filled the hungry with good things. And sent the rich away empty. You have helped your servant, Israel, in remembrance of your mercy. According to the promises you made to Abraham and Sarah and to their descendants forever.
Friends, can we be in prayer together? Let us pray. Holy and amazing God, we always come before you with so many different things going through our minds. We come with so many different issues and struggles and, and concerns that sometimes it's difficult to pray. We feel overwhelmed. At this moment in our world, God, we find ourselves scared, uncertain, divided, struggling, isolated. So many different ways to describe what we've been experiencing here during this pandemic. And yet we come during this season of Advent, this time of adventure, waiting expectantly for your love to be real to us. As we pray as your people, we have many that we would hold up in prayer, some within this congregation who are dealing with grief, others who are struggling with their health, some who are continuing to battle isolation. We also remember those around the world who are in the same pandemic struggle. We remember the people who are trying to recover from hurricanes and fires and so many different almost unimaginable disasters. But we do come together as your people right now and know that we are called to be people of hope. We are called to be people of peace. We're called to be people of joy. We're called to be people of love. Grant us the grace and strength to, to grow in all those things. To see one another as allies and working together. to achieve your will. Narrow the gaps that divide us. Bind us together as your people so that we feel that deep connection of love and grace that flows from you. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen.
Last week in our worship service, as we came to our close, I think I shared with you that every week I'm going to give you a mission, you know, should you choose to accept it. It's a message, it's a mission with a message this week again. I'm inviting you to be hashtaggers of peace this week and to share your creativity on your Facebook pages, your Twitter, your Instagram, Snapchat, whatever accounts you have. And including the hashtag, more peace. And again, if all that sounds crazy to you, all, you know, completely unheard of to you, not something that you even participate in or have any desire to participate in, that's fine. Uh, you don't necessarily have to have access to social media to, to share more peace. So I invite you to offer peace to someone this week. Whether you do it through social media or whether you make a phone call or you send a card, uh, you know, maybe you socially distance, say hi to somebody and offer a word of peace. Through whatever means you have, through whatever channels or communication that are available to you, I invite you to do so this week. And now let us turn toward the light that is the candle of peace. And let us take that into the world. And let's say together these words of benediction. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Go in peace. Amen. There were shepherds outside. No, oh, sorry. Joseph, son of David. <laughs> and lying in a manger. Friends, we have seen something amazing tonight. I don't know <laughs> about... <laughs> Did someone say king? That would be me. And welcome to our observatory. We, oh, wait, I guess that, I forgot the one. <laughs> you forgot the one. I forgot the one in the back here. And they all lived happily ever after. The end. That was a good book.
All right, well, good night, you guys. Lay down, let's get some sleep. <laughs> okay. Some flour, sugar. <laughs> so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> she says that this child won. The child she carries two is actually God's child. <laughs> Nobody cares about us shepherds. We're poor and we haven't been, been We study the stars. We we studied the stars so well that when something changes, we notice immediately. You smile your face! Look right here. For you, God. For you, God. Oh, wait, wait. I didn't. I, you know. Surely from now on. Oh, oh. oh do you know me? Even though we didn't know exactly what was going on, what was going on, we didn't know exactly what we were doing. Um, <laughs> even though we didn't know exactly who he was, <laughs> though we didn't know exactly what the line was. <laughs> Even though we didn't exactly know... <laughs> That's fine, just keep going with it, that works! I can't get that. <laughs> I'm making the cue card. For you, God, have looked with faithfulness... <laughs> I can't! Baby had a little lamb, little lamb, little lamb, baby had a little lamb, Oh my golly!